Show on 100.7 WMMS. I got another $1,000 for you in about seven minutes. 4.30 is going to be the next chance for you to grab yourself a thousand bucks and go fund yourself. So listen closely for that. Uh, the Bill Squire Friday Get Down, as the name implies, is um, on the way in a bit. That is how we know the weekend is officially underway around these parts. Daylight saving time ends this weekend, too. So everybody gets an extra hour there. I always love the think pieces that range from, hey, we really need to change daylight saving time. We don't need it anymore. To, it's terrible for your health. <laughs> like that what one. Is, daylight savings? Is? Yeah, people write things. It's really not good for, and it screws up animals, circadian rhythms, and all this kind of stuff. Which, you know, I'm sure some of that's true. It doesn't exactly track on people's list of priorities. I'm getting all kinds of texts from people that don't know they're texting me. And they think they're texting WTAM. We got an email earlier today that Bloom Daddy, who's the guy that does afternoons at TAM, he's the guy that replaced Trevisano after Mike Trevisano died. We got an email this morning that he was going to have Trump on. So these people think they're texting TAM and they're texting me and they're all pissed because apparently he did a real softball interview with Trump. I didn't think there were any TAM listeners holding anybody's feet to the flame over softball interviews with Trump. But again, I would tell you you're texting the wrong station, but you're not listening to me. You're listening to them. And you're not going to go through every single text. You're just texting me. So, uh, anyway. How long was he on? No clue. Alan, I used to work at Victoria's Secret. And you won't believe the number of guys that would come in to get their girlfriend or wife lingerie. And I would ask for a bra size. And I would absolutely get the cupped hands in the air saying about this big. (laughs) This many pounds. Oh, yeah. We were only half (laughs) joking when we said that. Yeah. It's one of the easiest things you can do. And it's amazing how many dudes don't take the time to know their girl's bra size. Or just underwear size. It's so easy. You go into the drawer, see what she's got. You go off and you buy whatever. With a camera phone, snap a picture of it. If so you're confused, easy. Yeah. Yes. This is what she already wears. Give me more of this. That's right. Exact same style. Exact same, you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe a different color. Just considerably <laughs> less material yeah. is what I'm looking for. It's really a gift for me. Like when it's sheer. So it's like there's not even a bra, bra there, right? Yeah. So you can see the nipple smashed down <laughs> by the material. The smashed Ooh, down yeah. nipple. That's. It. I think that was the name of a corn swill song <laughs> back in the 50s. By the way, devotion to accuracy, and thank you so much for the people who took me to task. I was playing a little Judas Priest earlier because they're getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yesterday, and I chose a song called Hell Patrol which is from a great album called Painkiller. And I said that it was Rob Halford's return to Judas Priest. In fact, it was not. It was his last album with them before he split for a while. Oh, you idiot. I know. Um, That's, of course, when Tim Ripper Owens, the pride of Akron, Ohio, took over for Rob Halford. There was that period there where they did two or three albums with uh, Ripper Owens, and he's actually been very publicly... Um, miffed that he's not getting inducted with them into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He feels like he was treated like a footnote in the history of Judas Priest. And that's got to be somewhat true. There's a guy named Blaze Bailey. When Bruce Dickinson first left Iron Maiden to go off and do different things, a guy named Blaze Bailey replaced him. And they really didn't miss a step. I mean, obviously, Bruce Dickinson's the OG, as is Rob Halford. But neither of those bands really missed a step. I mean, the movie Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg was essentially about Ripper Owens. Um, About how he was in a Judas Priest cover band and they heard him. Somebody sent him a tape and they go, hey, do you want to be in Judas Priest? And so... What was the name of the band in the movie? Steel Dragon, I think. Steel Dragon. I love that movie. Jennifer Aniston's the girlfriend. And yeah, they go through trials and tribulations. Dominic West is the main guy in the band. Yeah, great movie. 
uh, l- largely fun movie. Or loosely based. Well, okay, yeah. yeah, it was a fun movie. It's not like nobody's it's getting right. Oscar it's good. It's noms, good. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it was okay. Um, but Iron Maiden, I don't think has ever been within throwing distance of induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, much to the eternal shame of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, quite frankly. I can't believe that they had to drag Priest in. Yet kicking and screaming, you got to get these guys to show these kinds of bands some love. There are a dozen bands of that ilk that should be in there already. Uh, and so Judas Priest getting in kind of under the wire. They're giving them like a musical excellence award or something. They're not among the main inductees, but they're getting in. They're getting Who cares? In. That's, yeah. That's the important part. So what I've been reading, you know, when they first announced Priest was getting in and Ripper Owens uh, said, oh, well, I should be getting inducted with these guys. I don't, I get where they're coming from, but I don't disagree with him either because he was there. But I think they look at... I think it's at the discretion of the band, quite frankly, because a lot of times these bands will be like, look, here's a guy who was with us for a couple of albums 15 years ago, and we want him to get in with us. Alan, it's the ring size that's harder to get. Yeah. Yeah, but here's what you do, too, is you buy a ring sizer on Amazon, and then when your girl's not looking, you get one of her other, you what? Cut her finger off. You get one of her other rings and you put it on the sizer. You have her slip you a digit and then you just try and remember. That's right. My yeah. b-hole has an amazing yeah. memory. And then you go, all right, put some stuff in there, and then you go, that's the one. That's the one. That's the size that it feels that's like. That's right, and please trim your nails next time. That's the one. My tuchus is in Mensa. No more coffin nails. <laughs> ah. Alan, how could daylight saving affect animals? They have no clocks. That is true. Yeah, they're not wearing um, wrist watches. Yeah, well, if you've ever seen an animal, uh, there was that... Uh, it affects my dog because my dog is used to the time. So yeah. my dog... Well, they're, they're circadian rhythms, yeah. yes. So my, my dog knows when I get home. She knows when we wake up. Like, she's... Uh, she knows when we go to bed. If we're not going to bed... Oh! Oh, good At the usual time, she will go and sit on the bed or like sit in the hallway and just be like, "Yo, it's time, it's time to go to this room." Or if we go to bed too early, she's like, "It's not, it's not in here time yet. We're supposed to be on the couch for a little bit more." Yeah, don't tell me what to do, dog. I'll tell you what to do. You get out. Don't tell. I don't go by your schedule. You go by mine. When we first moved in together, Brian was surprised that my cat will. Uh, like like you're saying, she mm-hmm. knows it's bedtime toward the end of the night. So yeah. like it's 11 o'clock at night, and I'll be like, all right, come on, Dutch, time to go to bed. And she'll jump off the couch, follow me right in, <laughs> like mm-hmm. just walk with me. And he's like, does she know what you're saying? I was like, I-, I assume. Ever since she was a kitten, this is what we've done. But have you practiced saying anything in that tone as you walk out of the room and see if she follows you? No, it's usually at the end come of the on, night. Come on, Dutch, time to get executed. Right, come on, Dutch, time to go to bed. Mm-hmm. She'd and come she with follows you. me right in every time. Hmm. The same can't be said for Brian. No, he, he prefers to fall asleep to something on Shutter, which is psychotic. His well, he's on a uh, unsolved mysteries kick right Ooh, now. Those Gwen's are... watching those too, and here's it makes no sense to me. I had another. <laughs> right. There's no ending. I had another. Why don't they dehydrate grapes? Moment with her. <laughs> yeah, she was talking about unsolved mysteries, old school with Robert Stack, and I go, I go. Well, the trouble with that is that there's no conclusion. Yeah. I go, why don't they ever have, she goes, because they're unsolved, dummy. It's the name of the <laughs> we show. We did that. And I go, oh, right. Because I'm such a fan of forensic files. That's like yeah. my comfort food is forensic files. Because they figure it out. In 30 minutes, mm-hmm. it's a nice, concise murder, investigation, law and order. Trial, They put yeah. them in and they're whatever. They find them. Unsolved mysteries I never got into. And I think it's primarily because of the unsolved part. I like solved mysteries. We were on the couch when the other night. I have a night. show called Solved Mysteries. On the couch the other night, he fell asleep, and I was not paying attention. I'm doing a Sudoku or whatever, and he wakes up, TV's off, and he goes, what happened? What happened to Seth? Or whatever the guy's name is. I was like, what do you think, Brian? The mystery is unsolved. <laughs> it's exactly the same every yep. time. Nobody knows what happened to Seth. He's been gone for 30 years. That's like, right. <laughs> um, also, devotion accuracy. I'm not having my best day today. I did mention Bruce Dickinson as the 
OG Iron Maiden singer. Of course, Paul Diano was the very first singer for Iron Maiden, the Killers album. And, you know, Bruce Dickinson was the one who really catapulted them into the stratosphere. But that's right, Paul Diano. Paul Bifano. Paul Diano. The Colgate Comedy Hour. Paul <laughs> Diano. I've got to give you some money here. It's $1,000. It's a chance to go fund yourself. So listen closely and good luck. The Buzzard wants you to go fund yourself and score $1,000. Enter the nationwide keyword GRAND at WMMS.com. That's GRAND. Enter it now at WMMS.com. And good luck from Buzzard Radio. Now, I do want to give a shout out to a guy named Emil out there in Sagamore Hills. He just he recently live right by there. He just recently won a thousand bucks from us by being the correct texture there nice. to go fund yourself. But that's not my favorite winner recently. Because my favorite winner recently is a woman who won in Pittsburgh. Um, remember our friend Casper? He used to be at Kiss FM right next yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our buddy Casper, um, who's a very talented, very nice guy, one of the nicest guys you'll meet in this business. Um, when he left Cleveland, he went to US 99 in Chicago. He went there and was successful there for many years, and then things changed, and now he's on the air in Pittsburgh at my old cluster. Uh, he's still doing country radio. He's at a station called Big 104.7. And one of the other stations there is like it's it's called Three WS in Pittsburgh. It's one of this company's radio stations, my old cluster. Um, but they're kind of like Pittsburgh's version of Magic, Three sure. WS. And they had a winner yesterday, a woman named Marie, and it is Pittsburgh gold. <laughs> <laughs> this woman who won, because what will happen is when we get a winner and we call them and we tell them. The production department will call them and so they can get audio from them for yeah. promos. Like, yeah. oh, my God, that's what this woman gives in. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Oh, I love it. So much for Manny Brothers. Marie from, I don't know where she's from, Sewickley or something. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. I have been entering to win the $1,000 prize ever since. $1,000 prize? $1, I won. Prize. Oh, my God. Almost like she said $1,000. $1,000 prize. prize. Ever since way back when you started. So when, you started. when you started. Oh, I, I She's, oh, God. I love Marie so much. Back when you started. So it's been a long time. I was just preparing dinner when I got a call and say, Marie, you won $1,000. When I first saw the call come up, I was leery because of all the spam and stuff you get. But you know what? I did, and I won. My plan I was a little leery because all the spam you get on the phones. But you know what? I said, think of all the permanies is going to buy me. Cap Koenig. I'm going to get myself season tickets to Akersher Stadium or whatever they call it now. My plans for the $1,000 is I have two two-year-old grandchildren and I have a four-month-old grandchild. So they are going to have one awesome Christmas. Hi, I'm Marie, and I just won a thousand dollars. From listening to iHeartRadio. Oh, I love you, Marie. Got text to win. Oh, and was- congratulations to Emil, who is our listener, uh, who won a thousand dollars there with. Uh, so just more proof that people win every single time to go fund yourself. Congratulations, uh- Marie. The Cleveland Comedy Festival is going on right now, and there's some comics in town from Toronto. And we were hanging out before my show yesterday, high and dry, just talking about the way that, you know, the, the little things and the way we say shot. They're like, you guys say shot, not shot. Shot. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if anybody from Toronto should be criticizing well, the way anyone says anything. They're not criticizing, anything. but they're just pointing it out. Did you say, get out? Yeah. What do you mean? And then, yeah, they're like, well, we don't really say a boot. We say about. They say like, about. Yeah, it's a boot. About, it's yeah. It's like a boot. It's not as pronounced as yeah. a boot, but yeah. it's pretty close. It's pretty close, yeah. yeah. But they, it was funny. And Listen just, to Wayne Gretzky talk, and it's, holy cow. Because it's, like, it's noticeable, but it's not. It's very subtle. And it's it's one of those things where we were talking for a little bit, and I was, and I didn't, then I was like, oh, you guys are the Canadian comics. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, I can, there it I is. can yeah. tell. But very funny. Good t- great crowd last night. <laughs> are you Sorry, okay? I had a little hiccup there. <laughs> <laughs>
Bro. Did it? Did it? Did their comedy translate south of the border? Yeah, yeah. All right. You know how you guys got your loonies and toonies, and uh, you know I was getting a coffee at Tim's, mm-hmm. and people are like, "What the hell's going on here?" A lot of poutine jokes. Mm-hmm. I'll be poutine that in my mouth later on tonight. Hey, she said. Bow, 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 it's about a penis. <laughs> No, I didn't mean oh. that. I meant, no. The poutine. poutine. What That's do you. Oh. Oh, come on, Mary. Sorry. You got to take everything know. that I say and you got to turn it, it was turn about, into things about something that's. <laughs> discharges and. Come on, man. No. Help about me out. Discharges with you. Help me out. I've been trying to win ever since you started. <laughs> Daughters. I love it. Thousand dollars. I love it. She's my favorite. Yeah, I'll give her. I'll give her to you again. Hold on, people. Are like, oh my god, I got to hear that again. Yes, please. I'll give it to you. Give uh, us the good it's stuff. Marie right there in uh, Pittsburgh. Oh my gosh, I have been entering to win the thousand dollar prize ever since way back when you started it. So it's been a long time. I was just preparing dinner when I got a call and say, Marie, you won a thousand dollars. When I first saw the call come up, I was leery because of all the spam and stuff you get. But you know what? I did, and I won. My plans for the $1,000 is I have two two two-year-old grandchildren, and I have a four-month-old grandchild, so they are going to have one awesome Christmas. Hi, I'm Marie, and I just won $1,000 just for listening to (laughs) iHeartRadio. Yeah. Two. I love it. Huh? No, I'm just Dollars. Yeah, dollars. 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 I can't believe it. Listen. A thousand bucks is a thousand bucks. A lot of money. I wish we were eligible to win, oh, but we're alas, not. we are not. How many degrees of separation does that work, by the way? Four. Okay. What? Because I can't win, nor can my mom or my brother. But can right, my cousin Friend, win? <laughs> friends, friends, and family of employees may not win. I have so many friends, though. I know. Here, here's what you do. See, that's not a problem for me. <laughs> here's what you do. You cut out all your friends and tell them to enter. Mm-hmm. Said, not my friend. I hate and that then person. They, they dumped them last week. They didn't even come to my birthday party. Yeah. They didn't even come to celebrate the shoes Bill got me. They're so cute. I got a break. Uh, if you want to text for something, 35192. AllenCoxShow.com is where you can watch live and listen wherever on the iHeartRadio app. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7. WMMA.